All right. It looks like ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. Okay, I think we're we're live from what it says. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. And I'm Jay. We are here with uh, it's a coffee and cigar night here, and we're going to be talking and uh, about coffee and uh, cigars and having a smoke as well. Um, those of you who are tuning in, um, can you hear me all right? Really what I'm, I'm interested to know is like, is the synchronization of the words that, I, that you're hearing matching with my mouth? Because I've been having some issues these last two days trying to get that sync to be correct. So if it's off, drop me some comments, uh, some comments to let me know, hey, there's something wrong. Or you're like talking, I can hear you talking, but you're not, your lips are moving at the wrong time or something like that. And um, yeah, tell me that because that way I can correct it inside the software. I'm using these, these, uh, this thing called OB OBS, which is open broadcast software. And that's supposed to connect to the camera and stream it. And then I can put that logo, the logo, where is it? The logo's here, that little logo you see, the Ono Coffee logo right here. Um, that's through the OBS system, but it's actually quite technical and you know despite the fact that i i've done this in my previous life it's it's very different now because it's it's all software based and yeah i just have been out of it and i've been trying to figure it out and learn the whole time so what we're doing here tonight is we're just going to be talking about coffee and cigars and um i think we shouldn't take too much longer to talk what we've got uh today is we're going to start off oh uh We've got this cigar. Where is it here? This is the Perdomo Firecracker. And the Perdomo Firecracker is a new release cigar that came out for two guys' cigars. And the guys, that, the, the guys, if you're not too familiar, but the guys that own two, bleh, the guy who owned two guys, a guy named Dave Garofalo, and he also runs something called the... the Cigar Authority podcast, and they broadcast on uh, on Saturday afternoons. And so for their their shop, Two Guys, Cig Two Guys Smoke Shop up in New Hampshire, every year they have a different manufacturer making these firecrackers, which is three and a half by 50, and it's got a pigtail. See that pigtail? That's kind of... There we go. You can see that there. It's kind of like a firecracker. You know, it has the... Uh, like a wick. Now, people that I, I've talked to, they like to smoke it with leaving the wick on the cigar. So it kind of burns down. I'm not sure what I'm going to do today. But um, what I was actually thinking about earlier is that it would be fun if one of these manufacturers actually would take a firecracker wick. And then from this point down the, the wick, if they would actually wrap the the firecracker wick in, uh, with the tobacco so that you could sit there, unwrap it, light the end, and it would sizzle all the way down to the cap. Now, I don't know if that would do anything because it would probably burn the cap and maybe you'd smoke it this way rather than, than cutting the cap off. Smoke it from the foot rather than the cap. But anyway, that's kind of neither here nor there. We're going to be getting into this one. So this is a blend... Um, of cigar, uh, of tobacco that is an uh, all Nicaraguan Puro. So that means that all the tobacco comes from Nicaragua. It's a sun grown wrapper and then Cuban seed binder and filler. So the, all the stuff on the inside here, for those of you who may not be too familiar with cigars, the inside stuff is the binder and filler. And that's everything's from Nicaragua. And they're pretty much, I think, grown all in the Esteli Valley. There might be some fields in Jalapa, I think. Maybe in Ocotal, but I've not seen them in Ocotal, so I'm not really sure. Um, but it says in their, in their production notes that it's supposed to be a full body with notes of uh, black pepper and cedar and dry spices. So we'll see. And so these were actually released um, 1,000 boxes, 25 cigars to a box. And while they're normally only made for two guys smoke shop they're actually because two guys owns united cigar and their big cigar distributor 
they started selling these and distributing these to other retailers. So I actually got this at, uh, at Raul's shop, uh, the tobacco leaf here in Jessup. I got this, I picked this up last weekend and thought maybe this will be the first one we're going to use for the show tonight. So, well, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, what we're going to be smoking with is the Esteli coffee. And this is the coffee that I produce with Spro. And it's a blend. I, I, I am on the cover of the bag. Ba that's me on the bag. And this is actually a field in Esteli, in Nicaragua, that when I was visiting one of the farms. This is the Oliva farm, Oliva family's farm. And uh, just beautiful tobacco. And so this blend of coffee is made to pair with cigars. So like a few years ago, we partnered with Fratello Cigars to create their Fratello blend. Now we kind of also have this. It's, a little, it's quite a bit different than the Fratello where the Fratello blend was made to really pair with their red line, their very first line. This is a little bit broader in application, so that it's really kind of made for other, other cigars to go along with. And that's really great to use in the morning or the afternoon or the evening, depending on when you like to have your cigar. So we've got this coffee. And also, if you want this coffee, we have this on our website, sprocoffee.com, and you can get 10% off by using Cigar Live as your discount code. So put discount cigar live in, the, oh, I'm sorry, not cigar live, coffee live in the discount code when you're checking out. You get 10% off. Um, there's also a subscription. And if you do the subscription thing, you also get 10% off on the subscription as well. And so no more plugging. That's about it. We're just going to get right into it. So first we're going to brew, brew up our, um, our coffee. I've already got some pre-measured here. You can kind of see it. That's the coffee. Try to get a nice medium roast, a little bit farther than medium roast. Get a little bit more robustness out of the coffee. We're using a blend of like natural and um, washed coffees that are really going to give a nice like... We're trying to go for a little bit of chocolate, just a slight notes of fruits and some nuttiness that really will go well with like a spicy coffee, uh, cigar. Um, that's really kind of what we're going for. So we're going to grind it up. And for those of you who are like really in the coffee making, we're using, we're going to make a 12 ounce cup for myself. So 12 ounces, we use a basic brew ratio of two grams of coffee for every finished ounce. So if I'm making a 12 ounce cup, we're going to use two grams for each ounce. So that's 24 ounces. So I've already got that pre-measured. And then we're going to use the Clever Brewer. And the Clever, if you're not familiar with it, the Clever is a full immersion hybrid brewer. And it's full immersion in that you, there's a valve here at the bottom, right? That, that when you put that, when you put on top of the cup, it opens the valve and the coffee flows through. So it's very much a pour over in that respect. However, when it's not on the cup, the liquid is held in the, uh, in the vessel, so it's more like a French press in that, respe in that respect. So it's a hybrid, so it does both full immersion and the, uh, the filtration. So we're just using a regular Melita filter. Nothing too fancy. You can buy these anywhere. As you know, there's, all, of course, these the ceiling where they, they crimp it on the sides. We're just going to fold those over to fit that inside the clever. So it fits in as thus. Get our handy kettle. This is the Kalita kettle that I get from uh, Manila, that is uh, designed, uh, whose um, spout is designed by Ichiro Sakaguchi from Tokyo's Cafe del Hombre. All right, so we've got some hot water boiling here. Don't, well, I might burn myself, good Lord. We'll just get some hot water. Now we're just going to rinse the filter. Real simple. I'm gonna dump out that water. Then add the coffee. 
Then we're just gonna, oh, we need some more water. While I'm wearing a nice shirt, I'm actually wearing shorts below the table, so I have my legs in shorts, and if I spilled some of this hot water, it would be burning, scalding my legs. So here we are. We're just gonna add, I should hold it by the, we're gonna add the water. Just a little bit to saturate the grinds. And we've got our timer. We're gonna start the timer. Oh, we wanna do three minutes. See that? Come on, three minutes. We're gonna put a little bit of coffee, probably about a hundred mils or so, and let the uh, let the we're gonna let the bloom happen. So the blooms, the coffee's bloomed. Kind of hard to see. What I really need to do is probably put a. Next time I'm gonna to have to work on getting a uh, a camera flying above. All right, now we're gonna fill it up all the way. Ooh. That'll do it. And the nice thing about this, it comes with a handy lid that you put on top to make it all, uh, to keep the heat in. And we're just gonna let that roll. Then we also have our cup. We might as well preheat that. So we just put a little cut water into the cup until it gets warm and that should do pretty good. We still got a little bit of time to go. So meanwhile, let's get into the cigar a little bit. So again, this is a three and a half by 50. It is um, a Nicaraguan Puro, and it is uh, supposed to be quite nice. You know, the guys from Cigar Authority say that it is, what does it say? They say it's the best tasting um, firecracker they've ever made. So. We'll see about we'll see about that. All right, now we've got our cutting time, so I guess yeah, I guess I'll just follow along with what they say and leave it on here. So I'm gonna use the Zycar Multi Tool MTC or whatever they call this thing. I really like this cutter because it was um, it was introduced to me by Paul Palmer of um, Aganorsa many several years ago and I just thought it was a great tool that, that cut really well but let's look the construction it's a, it's not a very dark wrapper I don't think it's kind of like a not quite a Colorado but medium plus kind of color to it for a, you know what you'd think for a sun grown wrapper it's on the I would say it's on the lighter side like if I think about the Arturo Fuente kind of sun grown the ones that come with the kind of red label those seem to have a very rosado, really, really darker kind of, like a really distinct reddish kind of color. This one, you know, comes off a little bit on the uh, the lighter side. So, well. Some nice spicy aromas on the, on the, uh, on the wrapper. A little bit of sweetness on the tongue with the, the wrapper here. That's interesting. All right. Oh, time for us to brew the coffee. So we're just going to take that, place it on top of the cup, and as you can see, the liquid is now flowing through the filter and filling the cup, and now it's starting to burn my hand. Oh, gosh, that is hot. <laughs> we want to remove the, uh, the lid so that it will, uh, it will flow. I've actually had it, so when I put the, if I've kept the lid on when I was working, and I didn't take it off, so I've actually had at times when it would actually suction down and then stop the flow through the, the filter and the valve, so that was really, so I always kind of give it a little bit of an adjustment to uh to let it flow all right all right there we go oh that was a little bit too much a little bit too much that's all right that's all right oh
Well, all right, all right. Here we are. Here we are. Oh, a bit, a bit, a bit on the hot side. All right, so let's do the lighting. I've got my Jetline. This is my Jetline. I guess they call it the G4000. I like to call it the Phaser. Look at that thing. It's kind of like a lightsaber. A, oh, no. Like a big, big one, right? Look at that. This is for serious lighting. The problem with this one is that you really kind of be, got to be a little bit careful. I saw this several years ago at the trade show, and I was just like, oh, I got to have one of those. There's no real need for this. This is really just overkill and ridiculous. But I thought it would be kind of fun to have. And it's also one of these things that because it's a double jet that has so much power, I mean, it, you go through butane like you would not believe. All right. A little touch up there. Oh, this thing does produce quite a copious amount of smoke. That's quite interesting. So initially there's some spice to it, that's true. I, I would say there's definitely some spice starting off with the coffee, with the uh, cigar. Um, you know, the Cigar Authority says that in their, in their tasting notes of it, that the cold draw had sub, sub, subtle apricots. I mean, I got more of like a, just a general like sweetness. I wouldn't say it's apricot. They also talk about brown sugar and spice and nutmeg and cayenne. And I didn't get any of that. Definitely the black pepper. I mean, that's something that I think is pretty common among sun-grown wrappers. I mean, to be honest, like some of the sun-grown wrappers I don't really like, like the Arturo Fuente Rosado wrappers. I'm not really a big fan of those. I just, there's just some, that black pepper. I'm, I'm just not, sometimes I'm just not a, bl a big fan of that. They, even with, with the number of the Pepin Garcia stuff, because a lot of that has a lot of the heavy black pepper. I'm not terribly a fan. But this one's starting off quite nice. Definitely strong, and definitely a, a distinct black pepper in this one. All right, so here we are. So if you have any questions out there, just let me know. Hit me up. Comments. Yeah, that's quite nice, actually. It is starting off quite nice. I'm kind of enjoying that. You know, the Square Authority talked about having some almond. I didn't really get any almond. Maybe there's a little, there's a little bit of bitterness that could be, could be described as almond, I would say. Mm, the chocolateness in the, in the, there's like a, a more of a dark cacao in the coffee that's kind of going well with the, uh, the pepper. Oh, you know what I got here? I got a, something in the mail today. Much yesterday came, 
And I thought that we would save it for today to do an unboxing. Unboxing live. There you go. Here it is, from Romacraft to back. I'm not quite sure what it is. It could be something in related relation to the, uh, the Weasel Fest. And so if you haven't heard, the Weasel Fest that was scheduled for September 5th has been postponed until um, Memorial Day 2021. A bit of a shame, but understandable considering how the things are going in Texas at the moment. All right, so let's see what it, it's from uh, Sean Coleman who's actually from Maryland as well. I think he's from Waldorf. All right, open that up. Oh, big. Well done, Sean, well done. Ooh. Let's see here. Oh, we got some. Oh, yeah, this is Weasel Fest stuff. So here's Weasel Fest. Can you see that? There we are. Weasel Fest patch. Oh, in. Oh, sorry. Weasel Fest patch in, I guess, subdued. Weasel Fest patch in color. Ah, welcome to Austin. Eh? And then cards. Oh, Austin. Explore the desert door for wild, harvested, handcrafted Texas Soto. Soto? Soto. 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 The only Soto dis distillery in the United States for tastings, tours, cocktails, and live music. No reservation needed. That's good. Garrison Brothers Distillery sticker. Oh, not bad. Not bad. That's nice. And then this one is, oh, sorry. The desert door. Oh, this is more Soto. So here's some, what do you call this? This is some cocktails you can make with Sotol. Is it Sotol or Sotol? Oh, God. I'm one of those people that can't pronounce it anymore. Red Velvet Event matches. Ooh. A Weasel Fest Eco Vessel that weasel fest weasel fest tankard awesome it's got a little sippy cup because all guys need sippy cups otherwise it's starting to run down our shirts Put that over here actually that's nice because I got this weasel fest one to match my big uh, eco fest uh, thermos whatever you call it I'll put that together so that they look nice on the t on the stand over there there is a box of some sort of RC, don't know what that means. Oh, Roma Craft. <laughs> What's going on, Rusty? Good to see you. Kels, good to see you as well. Oh, thanks, Kels. I appreciate that. From uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the coffee. Oh, look, Zycar bottle opener. Roma, Zycar of a Roma Craft bottle opener. Huh? Oh, nice, nice. And the, oh, here's the other part. So there's the Garrison Distillery uh, card, and now there's the koozie. Oh, it's getting to the bottom. And then we got a, a little bundle of cigars. So, in, oh, and a, oh, look at that. Weasel Shelter. Oh, stickers. This is actually what I've been really wanting is some Roma Craft stickers. Let's see what they got here. We've got Roma Cuiso Shelter, uh -huh. Whiskey Rebellion, uh -huh. Weasel Fest stickers, Roma sticker, Intemperance sticker, uh -huh. Roma Craft sticker, <laughs> Cro-Magnon sticker. Good Lord, I'm going to have a lot of stickers. Testosterone sticker. Can you see that? Come on. I'm on. There we go. Bam. 
Roma sticker. Oh, and then Boveda pack. Nice, nice. And then inside the the cigar pack, we've got the uh, the Wonderlust. I believe this is the Corona Fiorella, which I think of the Wonderlust. This is the best one of them of the of the four that are out there. I had this before. That's excellent. We've got the Neanderthal. I don't remember the size name of this one. You know what I like about the Roma thing is that they've got these really interesting cerebral kind of names. Whiskey Rebellion and Temperance. And then the fabled uh, Weaselitos. So these are the Weaselitos here, which is a really small... Can you get that? There we go. The Weaselito. Uh, this one I actually had in um, at one of the trade shows. Really great little smoke. The, and the interesting thing is that these are, no, these are two cigars that are not normally available in the United States. So you can't buy these here. You have to go somewhere else. So if you want to go somewhere else, go to Delay. Delay Cigarin. D-A-L-A-Y. Zigarin. Z-I-G-A-R-R-E-N. And uh, Sully is a, is a great tobacconist out in uh, Saarbrücken, Germany. I've been there several times and uh, usually go to hang out with him and, and get cigars. So they've got it all. All of these that aren't here. All right, let's put this away because we'll go back to our cigar. Oh, and so to answer your question, Rusty, yes, I am starting to plan out what we're going to smoke. I think, so yesterday I picked up two of the Brule Toros, the, uh, the, Dumbarton, the Dumbarton Estates. You know, my buddy Al Plitt and I were sitting around uh, smoking cigars the other night and we were talking about this Dumbarton Brulee, and the Brulee is this uh, is a cigar that has a, a sweet tip. Now, Steve Saka, who's the owner of the company and, and um, the developer of the the cigar, he's you know he's he, there's all kinds of stuff on it. Whether it's you know people say oh it's a sweet tip, it's dipped in sugar, whatever it is, but there is a distinct sweetness to it. And um, whatever the case is, we're going to smoke that. So plan on that. So it's either going to be that one. No, let's do that. We'll plan that. So next week, it'll be the Brulee. And I've got, I just got the Brulee Toro. Picked that up from my friend Tony at his cigar shop yesterday. And then I've also got um, the Paul Gamerian 30th anniversary cigar. So Paul Gamerian has reached his 30th year in the business and has, hein has had Heinrich Kellner at the Davidoff, Davidoff factory produce him a new Vitola. And we'll do that the week after. So next week, Brulee... And then 30th anniversary, um, Paul Gamerian, the next week. And then maybe we'll do the, um, maybe the third week from now, maybe we'll do the SP54 um, Siri Pravada 1975 from, uh, from PDR Cigars. Okay. Sure, Dr. I'll, I'll make sure to put that in the show notes later. But for the moment, let's plan on the Dumbarton um, Brulee Toro. So if you need to get that, I think that my friend Tony will ship to you. So if you can't find it locally, give him a call at uh, Mount Washington Cigar here in Baltimore. And I think that he can put it together and send up, send up to you some. All right, all right, let's have this coffee now. So this cigar, we're, we're still in the early part of it. Not even the first third is, is complete. Still put black pepper, a lot of black pepper, smooth, easy going. There's a light bitterness to it, nothing offensive, nothing harsh. Just generally nice, peppery. Maybe I'm just one dimensional and I can't taste too well. <coughs> So, some of you may have heard of this thing called the retrohale. I just tried to do it. Interesting. I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I think I, some of it came around and... Uh, that's not too pleasant. Uh, Kells, that's probably true. So Kells says, yummy Perdomo. Yummy Perdomo. Not the best cigar out there, but one, the one that got me into this world. 
You know, Perdomo's an interesting company. I, I, mean, I know their, their local rep here, a guy named Walt Kukier, pretty, pretty well now. I mean, I've known him for many years, and we've hung out and talked and smoked cigars together, and he's really a, a good guy, and it, it's really interesting. I don't, Perdo, I'll be honest with you, Perdomo hasn't really been my favorite cigar either. I mean, they sell a lot of cigars. They're really well regarded. Um, one of my friends, Tony, has been down to their factory to, to check it out, and comes back raving with it and you know when we're at the trade show staying at the uh, and so there's a trade show every year in vegas uh it used to be called the um rtda the retail tobacco dealers association of america then it became the ipcpr the international premium cigar retailers associate ipcp whatever it was uh, cigar retailers and then just last year they changed it to the pca the I don't know what the P stands for. Professional Cigar Association? I don't know. Um, I'm only tertiary to the business because of the coffee line that we do for Fratello. But I go to the trade show every couple of years. And um, so when we're staying at, the, uh, at the, tre the, the Treasure Island in Vegas, that's usually where the whole team Perdomo stays. And so we see Walt and, and Nick, P Perdomo, and all of their crew hanging out at the lobby and you know, they're all pretty good guys. and But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely one, I'm more along your line. It's, Perdona was never really my first go-to cigar, but I've definitely ha I definitely think they offer some great cigars at really good price points. Like, for example, I, one, one that I really will gravitate to, especially if I'm in a new shop that doesn't have some of the other brands that I like to smoke, um, I'll go for the Lot 23 Maduro and Robusto size from Perdomo. That's consistently really enjoyable, you know, a nice cigar to smoke. <laughs> Old codger, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, you should ask, next time you see Walt Keller, is what you should do is, is talk to him about, um, I don't know, he's probably talked to you already, but about uh, playing the saxophone in jazz. The guy is a big jazz guy. He used to play around in the, in the years past. Really, really, he's really, really into it. Hopefully, he's good. Okay, so Rusty. Rusty's saying, what is your, what was your first go-to cigar? Oh, that's a good one. So when I first started smoking cigars was, um, I really started getting into it back in like 1994. And I started hanging out at a cigar shop in Hon I used to live in Honolulu. And the, I found this cigar shop called the Don Pablo Smoke Shop. And it was right near Ala Moana Center. And I walked in there and I just started to, uh, I ended up hanging out there. The, 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 the manager, a guy named Ray Rodriguez, who became, who became one of my closest friends, um, he was uh, the manager. And he was just kind of like, you know... <laughs> very welcoming and, and just kind of created this whole space that was just welcoming to all sorts of people. We had this really great group of guys and, and women that were just very eclectic. And, um, but what I started to do is I just kind of went through the humidor back then and just kind of every day that I would go in, I would just take a different cigar and smoke through them all. I mean, I guess the, one of the first ones that, I mean, back then in the early to mid 90s, there wasn't the the plethora of cigars that are available today, like the, all the boutique cigars didn't exist. I mean, Arturo Fuente was pretty much the boutique cigar of the time. Arturo Fuente and La Gloria Cubana, when uh, Ernesto Perez uh, was running the company still before he sold it to, to whatever conglomerate he sold it to. These were like the big ones. And some of the other brands were Pleiades. Um, gosh, it's been such a long time. But Arturo Fuente was really kind of and then when I moved back to Baltimore and found a new shop here called Rolling Road Tobacco, it was really Arturo Fuente that was like the, the go-to cigar. Arturo Fuente, oh, I remember my first go-to cigar was actually introduced to me by my friend Frank Orr, who now lives in Bangkok. It was the Partagas number 110 from Dunhill. So at the time, Frank, who's a photographer, was working part-time at the Alfred Dunhill store in Waikiki, and he, they, they sold cigars back then, and they released a cigar that was basically the Partagas Number no. 10, which is the very long, almost like an A-size cigar. 
but a very big, like, long church hill. And that really was kind of like the go-to cigar for, for me back then. That was really, yeah, I think that would be, I would say that would, that one and um, the Double Chateau Fuente from, from Arturo Fuente was very, was very sought after. It, I, I don't really recall, and then like, oh, the La Gloria Cubano Wavel. Like, I remember when the, um, there was a big cigar boom back in 1997 and like everybody was selling everything and everyone was selling out and you couldn't really get any cigars. And I remember a buddy of mine had a cigar shop down in downtown Baltimore and a bundle a bundle of La Gloria Cubano Wavels. I still have it. I never opened this bundle because it cost me so much money back then that I kept it and I still have it. And maybe I should open up one of these days. But basically, this bundle of like 20 or 25 cigars was $113. Now, today, $113 would be very, very like, wow, that's, you got to buy it. For 25 cigars, that's really cheap. But back then, in 1997, that was astronomical. You never paid that kind of money. It was ridiculous. So it was, uh, it was quite an experience. It was quite an experience. Ah, Kells, you like the lot 2032? Yeah, that is a good one. That is a good one. Uh, you know, I didn't. So Kells says here it's supposed to be a oh, with coffee cigar. I did not know that. That I did not know. Hmm. So Kells says also my first coffee that blew, that my first coffee, but I'm sure it means cigars. That blew my socks off in a good way was the Tatoy Black Labels, Lancero to be specific. That is a great cigar line. Actually, I, I remember when he uh, when Pete first came out with that he came out with it in a jar, so that was more of the Toro shaped. Man, that was that's a delicious cigar. That is excellent. So let's see, this Perdomo is coming along. I'm I'm probably smoking it too hard because as you can see, it's a little bit uneven in the burn. I sometimes tend to smoke pretty hard, pretty fast. I should probably slow down. But moving into the 2000s, like back to the, to the go-to cigars, like the, for me, the Paul Gamirian Bellicosa Maduro from like maybe 2002 to 2007. So for five years, that was, mostly what I smoked. It was really like, that cigar really hit me in a way. It's not too powerful. It's very subtle. It's got nice spice. It's really, really just a beautiful cigar. And then in 2004, I was out visiting Frank, who actually at the time lived in Honolulu, and we were, and in turn, when I was there, our other friend Marvin Chang, who's now, a, who's also a tobacconist, he came to hang out, and he was like, hey, I've got this new cigar, from some guy in LA who it's called Tatuaje, I want you to try it. And so he brought us this cigar and it, it's, it's what's known now as the Kohonu 2003. And I believe that was his second cigar that he ever made. I believe the first one was the Habana Cazadores, but, he, but Marvin brought us the, uh, the Kohonu and the Kohonu was just, it just blew my mind. I was like, this is, this is, this is it, this is the shit. I mean, I've got a, I was, so we were all over that and then, um, so for, so I would say the first go-to cigar, the really, in, of the new era, would be um, the Paul Grimier and Bellicosa Maduro. And then was the Kohonu 2000, 2003 from Tatuai. And then after that, I really got it, I really met, got into the PDR cigar. There's one that they make called the uh, Sir Pravada 1975. The one that we were just talking about maybe for the third week from now. But that one, the SP-54, which is a box-pressed Toro, that one was just, it just beautifully spicy and, and was just amazing. Like, I, I love those cigars. And, um, but the problem with that cigar is that it's such a delicate, light cigar that it needs to be your first one. Because if you're out there and you're like me and you're smoking Tatuaje and you're smoking, you know, things like that or Illusione, and you smoke those before you, and then you smoke that, like to say you smoked the Kona 2003, and then you smoke the SP54, you've just wasted your money. Because, at least I, I found that I did, because if I smoked a stronger cigar before the SP54, 
basically it blew up my palate and I just couldn't taste the SP-54 at all because it's such a subtle cigar. But the spice and the, the subtlety and the nuance of that cigar is so, like, brilliant that it it's just wonderful. So, yeah, that would be the... Well, here's the problem. So, like, this cigar, even though it's burning kind of weird, and I was going a little bit fast, and so I slowed down a little bit, now it's gone out. Which brings us to a conundrum. When the cigar goes out, you can flick off the ash, right? And then there's a little tunnel, and then you hit it with the light, and you try to get into the tunnel, and you, can, and you can light it. You can puff on it and light it and really hit it hard. But then it's because you've knocked out the structure, especially the in, internal structure, now when you smoke it, there's all kinds of like bits of cigar ash flying off it. They're all lit and they're falling on everything and you're burning your table. They're putting holes in your shirt. You know, it, it really kind of sucks. <laughs> so we're going to try the, the harder way which is to relight while not removing the cap and try to get the heat through it. See, it is out. So what I'm doing is putting the heat on the ash and then drawing on the cigar to try to get the heat to ignite the tobacco that's inside the, the where would the cherry should be reignite the cherry I guess you'd say I think we have some success well sort of Well, yeah, some success. We've got it lit. It's kind of half lit. We'll continue there. I've got a little mess on my new table. It's very distressing. Brush it off into my... This is the uh, Roma Craft... Gosh, how do we see this? I'm trying to do this cinematic lighting, but it's not evenly lit, so I have to hold it a certain way. So this is the Romacraft um, uh, metal steel ashtray from the Anvil guys. Oh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the, of the company that makes it. But great, a great ashtray. You can bludgeon some with it. But the, what I worry about is, like, these edges here, right? They're, they're really, you know, they are kind of squarish. <laughs> and it is steel. So I'm always kind of worried, like, is it going to gouge my table? It might. It might. So Rusty says, I got into cigars in college, and in being in New York around 1995, went down to Nat Sherman. That is a great shop. I love that, that, that townhouse of theirs. I remember the host series, and there was a medium body smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah, Nat, Nat Sherman had some really nice cigars, there, like the Metropolitan series. Um, well, there was one that I really liked from them. Gosh, now I can't recall. It was one of their older ones when they had the... Uh, I think they named after their newspapers or something like that. Oh, and Kells also has one of the jars. Those jars are really excellent. All right, so now we're burning into it. As if you look, if, we can, if you can see this, the, the, the ash has started burning into the wick or the, it's called the wick, I don't know. What do you call the part that you light the firecracker with? I, anyway, so it is holding place. I'm gonna take the band off, because otherwise I'll start smoking into the band. So you see that better. It is kind of starting to burn into that. It's kind of, I still think it'd be kind of fun to, if, if the next manufacturer would, would put a, a firecracker wick inside the wrapper that would uh, so you could ignite it and it would it wouldn't do anything other than burn the cap but I think it'd be kind of cool but the problem is you probably have knuckleheads at the cigar shop <laughs> lighting it and throwing at each other 
At least that's what some of my friends would be doing. Algonquin, ah, good, out, Rusty, that is it. Ah. So the coffee's doing nicely. You know, so coffee, as, you, as it cools, you know, it also gets, it's easier for you to, uh, to discern flavor. So I'm definitely getting a lot more chocolate. In this cup, the, uh, the fruitiness is a little bit subdued. Just light, kind of like dark cherries. So, in the, but on the cigar, where it was starting out really heavy in the black pepper, that's really mellowed out now. And maybe there's a little more of the nutmeg, and there's this particular spice I'm thinking about that I can't quite place. So, Rusty and Kells, are you guys smoking something? So, if you are, what are you smoking? And where are you smoking? Yeah, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So like I said, I, I was saying this at the very beginning of the, of the streamcast. It's for Fresh Fresh Reviews are watching you, Rusty and Kells now. I'm in our... How is the, uh, the audio to the video? Meaning, is my lips moving at the same time you're hearing the words? And are, and are they matching the words, or is it off by some amount? I had some troubles this last couple of days trying to get the two to sync correctly. I'm not really sure what the technical issue is. There's because I'm feeding the this this audio signal into the camera before it comes to the computer. So usually there's a an offset if you run the audio into the computer and the video separate. There can be this this time delay, but running it through the camera is supposed to rectify that, but evidently it didn't, and I'm kind of stuck, and so I'm also running this through a, uh, through a, a broadcaster, through some software called OBS. Oh, I'm on delay. Hmm. All right, let me see if I can adjust. You guys are saying that it's a slight delay of a couple of seconds, from the moment you, from the time that you hear the words until my lips move, is that correct? Four or five seconds, good Lord, this thing. There is a lot of, all right, let me see if I can rectify that. I'm gonna put 4,000 milliseconds offset. Okay, so maybe this has, maybe this has, has adjusted. I changed the setting. I was, I was trying to adjust it by a half a second. Now I'm actually bumping it up to four, to a four second change, which hopefully will make it so that my words and my lips are moving at the same time now. Uh, Kel's saying that, and for what I'm smoking, once I'm done with this vintage Perdomo, I might try my first Aladino. I think it's the name of the brand, supposed to make the old Camacho taste. You know, I'm not, I don't really recall the Camacho taste, but the Aladino, I had been hearing them talk about the Aladino on um, the Cigar Authority. And so I, last year I was in Boston for a coffee trade show. So I, just, I decided to drive up to the Two Guys Cigars to, uh, to check it out. And I ended up actually meeting the, uh, I ended up being served by the guy who's, who they call Mr. Jonathan on the show. And evidently Mr. Jonathan has this reputation of being an asshole and he's all kinds of like all surly and, and everybody hates him. At the time I didn't, I didn't really put the two together like that he was, and I didn't really understand all the, the personal dynamics of the, of the crew and how, so I, I, he was just, after a while of, of being served by him and he's taking me around the humidor, He's talking about cigars. He's talking about their offerings. He's welcoming me to the shop. Finally, after maybe about 15 minutes of, their, of being talking with him, is when it hit me that this is the voice that I hear on the show, and he's the guy, or one of the guys. I didn't know at the time that he really the different personalities that well. 
But as much as, so as I listen to the show nowadays, and I'm listening to how they talk about Mr. Jonathan, all I can think is that when I went there, that guy was super welcoming, super knowledgeable, gave, took the time to give me a tour of the entire space, showed me every kind of cigar that I might be interested in, offered suggestions, offered his honest opinion about things, and I walked out of there with, like, a big bag of, like, multiple cigars. One of them was the Aladino. Well, a few of them were the Aladino, and I bought the Aladino because he said they were really good, and I just wanted to give them a try, and I, but I never really heard about them, and at the time, this is just last April, I didn't really know anything about them. So over the next month or so, as I, I mean, I had a lot. I had, like, an easy, like, 20 sticks in this, in this bag, and over the next um, couple months or a month or so, I smoked through them all, and those Aladinos were all just great, great smokes. I was, so, yes, I, I highly recommend you to, to go for that Aladino. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. I think it's really quite nice. Also, oh, Rushy says, when you grind the coffee, when you ground the coffee, you could tell, oh, so you're talking about the, you could tell the delay then. Okay, so you can't, I guess, well, if you can't tell the delay now, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'll have to watch the replay and then get irritated with myself about it. So the cigar now, this, this uh, Perdomo Firecracker, is just kind of like mellowed out. It's going smoothly. There's, there is that definite light black pepper. I can feel the black pepper on the back of the throat. Oh, and so Rusty says he's not smoking right now. But after work tomorrow, relaxing with the Arturo Fuente Cuban Corona. Well, that's a nice cigar, too. So Kales is asking, here's a question. What's the most overrated brand? Oh, that's a good question. Well, you know, I guess I have to be honest. Like, maybe... For me, maybe the most overrated brand would be um, maybe Gurkha. You know, uh, Gurkha has. Uh, like I'll tell you a story. I was, I was in um, New Orleans in 2016 for the uh, for the IPCPR show, and I, for some reason, this one night of the show, I was out in the city, and I was. My friends had gone. My group of friends had gone somewhere, and I wasn't with them. And I'm wandering around the city, and I'm all alone, and I have no cigars. And I end up at this party, one of the cigar shop company parties, and um, I'm outside, and I run into my friend Raul, who owns Tobacco Leaf here in Maryland, and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? And I was like, oh, I'm just kind of hanging. And, um, oh, I think maybe I lost my, maybe I left my wallet in the hotel. That's why I didn't have any cigars, and I wasn't buying anything, but I just didn't have any. I can't remember call why. And... Um, but that's probably it. And, you know, outside of this party, this bar or whatever we were at, we run into the rep, the, our area rep for Gurkha. And he's a really great guy. I'm sorry, I forgot his name, but I've only met him like twice. And this was probably the second time that I met him. But really great guy. And he was, hey, man, I got, you know, have a cigar? I was like, here, I'll give you this one. And he gave me this 12 um, year cellar, vintage cellar aged cigar, Gurkha. And I was like, I'm very thankful he gave it to me. So, you know, but he smokes it and I smoke it and it just didn't meet my, to be, if I'm perfectly honest, it just didn't meet my personal palate. You know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, <laughs> I really, I really, I really smoked it very intentionally that evening. But I bring that up because one of my buddies here in Baltimore, who I smoke with on, on occasion, He's a big fan of this 12-year cellar vintage cigar from Gurkha. He loves them. He just loves them. He talks about them all the time. He's like, this is the greatest cigar. And I listen to him, and I just, and I, I, I just don't have the heart to say anything because it's like, you know, he loves this cigar so much that 
I just don't want to tell him that I, I, just, don't, I just don't share his uh, enthusiasm. So maybe to me that's, that's it. And I hear you, I, I see you as Kel is saying that he thinks that Alec Bradley is the most overrated. I've, I've, I have found that the Alec Bradleys are pretty good. The Princiata, the, Princiata, the, the box press are pretty good. <coughs> Even the America I found to be quite enjoyable. All right, this is nice, but you know what we need to do? We need to try something else because it is evening. And I forgot to bring something with me that I have to go run in and grab them back. So if you'll wait here just a second, I'll be right back. All right, they're coming back. Okay, so here we are back again. Had to go get a glass and a Diet Coke. Because we're gonna change it up a little bit. As much as I love the coffee, because I'm a coffee guy, I do like to enjoy other libations with my cigars. So we're just going to get some ice. And what should we add to this? Oh. Some rum time. Let's do some rum. I've got two rums here. I'm not really, a, I know a lot of guys are really into whiskey. I enjoy whiskey some time to time. Breckenridge is really good. Um, Knob Creek, Rowan Creek, I mean, Ro Knob Creek, I know the Knob Creek, Rowan, Rowan Creek, and then there's this one that has this red lettering and really kind of like a simple, that's beautiful, but for most drinking, I do enjoy rums, and historically, because I, I buy coffee and I'm in Nicaragua quite a bit, some, uh, drinking, buying coffee, one of the things when you're out, especially in Nicaragua when you're buying coffee, you're drinking a lot of this, the Florida Cana seven year, siete años. And this is a, a nice rum for mixing. However, I have to say that after, after trying other rums, I, I think that this is good for mixing, but not as nice on its own. So we'll just pour a little bit of that. I had found this one, and I, I was, I found this website called rumreviews.com, I think it is, and they've got this, like, 10-point system, so I was looking for, uh, for rums that are in the eight and a half and above, and this one turned up. Old line, cask-aged, I mean, this is the Navy Strength Old Line seven-year Caribbean rum, and I have to say, there's a, a really nice richness to this. We'll get into that in a little bit, but... You know, let's just uh, go with the classic. So after I started meeting more of the cigar manufacturers, and when I was visiting the cigar places, you know, everybody drinks the, the Floor 7, which is just a great overall rum. So we're going to enjoy that. You know, this one always nice vanilla light caramel but a little bit thin and astringent on the body but still really nice and that's why I always drink it with coke normally when we're in Nicaragua we just drink regular coke because they have the sugar but here I do diet I know that's probably worse so 
So back to overrated brands, you know, Dressy's saying that he thinks that Drew Estate is an overrated brand. You know, I, I mean, I have a long kind of history with Drew Estate, meaning that I remember meeting Marvin, one of the founders of Drew, gosh, when he first started, when he first got together with Jonathan and started making a cigar, and they started bringing the acid around. This is like maybe 1998, or maybe in like 2000, somewhere, somewhere right around there. And Acid, I don't know if you're familiar with that cigar, but it was named after a guy named Scott Chester, and his nickname was Acid, and he was this, like, I guess like a street artist or, you know, one of the artists up in New York City, and he drove a motorcycle. And so when you look at the Acid packaging, you see this, this guy, this silhouette of a guy in dreads on a motorcycle. Well, that's Scott Chester. And I don't know if Scott's still involved with, with Drew or if he's still involved in cigars. I haven't seen him in 20 years now. But, um, so that's when I first started meeting those guys. And, you know, as much as Drew Estate, whatever your feelings on Drew Estate, what I, what I think was most interesting is I went on the cigar safari for Drew Estate back in 2014, so six years ago now. And... You know, Jonathan Drew was one of the very first people to go to Esteli, if not the first person to go to Esteli to really start to uh, to build a new brand. And the people that work at Drew were telling me that, you know, when Drew first started and they start, people started working for them, they would, um, you know, they would just walk. They would walk. Then as time went by and the, the Drew brand grew and you know, contributed to the local economy and, and raised a lot of the people's wages. Then they started riding bicycles. Then they moved on to, you know, like scooters and motorcycles. So whatever your feelings on Drew about their cigars, if they're overrated or not, I mean, they, they do, they have contributed really in a significant way to the local economy there in Nicaragua. You know, like one of the interesting things about Esteli and as opposed to most of the rest of Nicaragua, is that because of the premium cigar industry there, there's relatively low unemployment. There's very low immigration as well. So as you know, like here in America, people talk about how we've got a lot of immigration from Central America. Well, if there's a strong industry in the local markets, then the people don't really have a reason to leave. They want to stay. I mean, who really... Who really wants to run off to another country and like work, you know, work and hide basically and leave their families? Nobody really wants to do that. So Esteli is a place where the cigar industry has impacted in such a way that people don't have to leave. So I think Drew has been a very good f force in, in Nicaragua, helping the, the Nicaragua, Nicaraguans to, uh, to improve their quality of life and improve their future. So. Now, back to their cigars, I mean, I, I mean, everybody does have a different taste. Like, just like my friend who enjoys the, the Gurkha, I mean, he's got his own, his own uh, palate that, that, really, that he really likes. And a lot of people enjoy the Drews. Me, personally, um, I've enjoyed them. Like, uh, the Stock Cut T52 Bellicoso, the, um, that one, that is just an excellent, excellent cigar. Like, so it, we were talking earlier about some of the go-to cigars. So for a while, that Liga, was it the Liga Provada? No, not Liga. There's only Ligas are number nines. The T52 is part, and I can't, the, the name of that line like escapes me, but I think that um, the T52 Bellicoso is a consistently fantastic cigar. For me, the only problem with Drew and a lot of these other companies is that once you start to get past the $10 price point, at $10, it brings pause to me. And then when we get past 12, 13, greater pause. 15 to 18, man. 18 and above, whoa. You know, I, I'm, I have to say that I'm, I'm a bit price sensitive in that respect, that, that I think that there's such great cigars at, available at a lower price point that in many respects, it kind of negates me from, from going to the other cigars, no matter how much I may enjoy them, just because the price point is so much higher. Now, you know, there can be the argument of, you know, you're paying a lot more for Drew because, and they're bringing a lot of benefit to the local economy, so you're, you're giving back in that way and you're helping 
in a larger way sense. But conversely, a lot of the other companies are also in Nicaragua that are at lower price points, and so yeah, it, it goes it goes both ways. You know, I mean, there's if you visit Drew and you see their facilities and you see what they're doing and how they handle everything, you know, pre-industry and and onward. You know, it's it is you know you do see that there is a lot of value. But it doesn't change the fact that even here, that here in America, that thirteen dollars is quite, thirteen to eighteen dollars is quite a significant amount to spend. And this cigar has gone out again. I need to keep up with this. All right, let's let's relight. Oh, so Kels, I, th I hear what you're saying. Kels is saying the Drew Estate is very hit or miss. For me too, since Swisher got the reins. Yeah, I th maybe that's a yes and no thing. I don't, I don't know too much about what's going on with that to uh, to make any kind of thoughts. I, I've been so busy with um, with uh, judging coffee competitions and and running national coffee competitions around the world that I haven't really been able to get down to Nicaragua. I haven't actually been to Nicaragua in a, in a few years now. I was trying to get back to Nicaragua this year. The plan was to go in March. But you know what happened in March. <laughs> so here's Russie's asking. Here's another question for you and Kells. Thoughts on Rocky Patel? That's a good question. Rocky Patel. You know, when you go to the trade show, and, I, and I'm going, you know, I, I do go to the trade show as part of the industry because of the Fratello coffee. Um, so I'm there as a manufacturer, and I get to see the show. And one of the things that I, I got to say is that, you know, you go to see some of these booths and, and Rocky Patel's one of them, they're massive. So, I mean, they're, Rocky Patel's got a tremendous business going on. And, you know, I, and I've had a couple tobacconists tell me this recently, that um, Rocky's making great cigars. You know, Rocky, in, in my circles here in Baltimore, Rocky Patel kind of has, you know, a reputation of making cheap cigars. You know, there's always cigars you can find. Like if you go to the, a lot of the um, the online retailers, you'll find brands like Rocket Patel always on sale, always being sold at a very steep discount. And so, it, in in our in, our, in my, within my group, a lot of that kind of like, I guess, tarnishes the image of the company. And that, you know, are you, are they making you know quality or are they just making you know quantity? Um, the last Rocky Patel cigar that I can recall is the one that they made for, um, oh gosh, I'm a Ravens fan and I can't remember this. Um, number 52 on the Ravens, Ray Lewis. So they made a line, they made a cigar for Ray, uh, in, in honor of Ray Lewis. And uh, I had that, that was the, I mean, I went out and bought that because, you know, I'm a Ravens fan, so I, I like the idea of that. And I remember that being a nice cigar, enjoyable. Um, but I haven't really, I, you know, as, as much as my, my, my peer group might be, you know, down on Rocky Patel cigars overall, I haven't really smoked anything that I can recall. Like, I think I did smoke something recently that was from, that was made by Rocky Patel, but under a different name. And I recall that being a, an enjoyable experience. Let me see if I have my notes on it. Over the last few years, I've gotten a bit um, kind of anal about cigars. Well, in the fact that I'm, I make a list on my phone of, of what I've smoked, and so I can kind of remember, and I kind of track what I'm smoking. And then every once a year on the uh, on the Tatawai Saints and Sinners group, I'll make like a a listing of what I've smoked and like. Some of the percentages, it's just kind of a geeky thing, but let's see, I think I smoked one recently.
Oh, I smoked this one. I think it's made by Rocket Patel. It's, the local cigar shop here is called The Humidor, and they have a house brand called The Zeus. And I had their Churchill, and I, you know, I, I th a friend of mine gave it to me. A friend Scott gave it to me. And I think that's made by Rocky, and that was, you know, pleasant. That was pleasant, so I can't, I can't say anything bad about them personally because I really haven't had as much um, experience with them. Rusty says he still loved the box press vintage 1992. You know, I, I should go check that out because I haven't, I haven't had a Rocky in a while, and a couple of the tobacconists I've talked to have been very... Uh, bullish on Rocky lately. They're like, you know, it, things have changed and it's not the same that you remember and, you know, it, it's, it's worth checking out, so I'll probably have to check it out soon. So the cigar, this is the second relight. And it's been um, not bad, not bad. A little bit more accurate because of the relight, I think. Still with the pepper, you know, it's a very peppery cigar. It's still enjoyable. How far are we into this? We're, oh, we're, gosh, we're an hour into this. Hour and 11 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. So how's the lighting in here? I hope it looks all right. I've been trying to figure out how to, how to light it, you know, getting more techniques. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on lighting to, and watching a lot of people's videos in their studios to see how they're, how they're rigging their lighting. It's, it's been an interesting uh, challenge to, to figure it out. One of the challenges actually is because uh, in this room I actually have it set up so that there's a exhaust fans that, that pulls out the smoke. So when I got up to get the, the Diet Coke, I actually turned on the fan. One of the problems with the fan is that it's so powerful that it sucks everything out, including the air conditioning. So right now it's starting to get warm. which could be a bad thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn the, the fan off. I'll be right back again. Oh, and you've heard that somebody has texted me. Let's see what the text is all about. <laughs> the text is from my friend Brian. He's actually in the hospital. He had an appendicitis burst, or his appendix burst, and I asked him the other day, I said, hey man, do you need anything? And he's like, well, I... Maybe someone to cut the lawn. So I texted his wife, and she's like, oh, I need the, the, the lawn, I think, is okay, but I'm kind of worried about the hedge. And I, so I messaged her back this morning. I said, yeah, no, okay, we'll work, we'll work on getting that. Let me know when you need it done. And then Brian just texted me now. I said, oh, man, I didn't mean for you to do it. He was like, I was like ah, whatever, dude, not a big deal, not a big deal. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. He's, he's like, I, I need someone that knows what they're doing because I don't know what I'm doing. I said, well, I don't, to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing either. I'm just be out hacking on it. Get out of the hospital, your head is all like messed up. Hey. So one of the techniques in, in movie making is that you'll take a space and you'll fill it with a generated smoke to, uh, to create a haze so that the lighting looks a little more hazy, a little bit more uh, interesting. So. The one thing about cigars is that as you're smoking, it gets a little more hazy and gets a, get that, it gets a more cinematic feel.
So cigars, not, not bad. Is we're we're kind of coming down to the wire on this one. It's doing pretty well. Not a bad smoke. I guess the question is, you know, would I buy a box? So these are sold in boxes of 25. They're about $7 a piece. I forgot how much I paid. I think I paid more because here in Maryland we pay a lot more tax. Um, would I buy a box? To be honest, probably not. I mean, I think it's worth smoking. I think it's enjoyable. Nice pepper, but it's not one of those that that I really want to smoke again and again and again. I tend to favor very, like, a little more subtle cigars with more nuance in the flavor, a little more spice, variable in the spiciness. And I think that's really what you get with when you think about, when I think about the cigars that I've really gravitated to over the years, like the um, Paul Gamerian Velicosa Maduro, the um, PDR, Siri Pravada 1975, um, Capa Madura SP54, the Kohonu Tatawai 2003, um, and now the um, well, my, my real go-to cigar now has been the um, the Roma Craft Intemperance BA21 Revenge. It's a box-pressed uh, Robusto that I've been just smoking a lot of lately, and I mean lately by the like the last three four years. Um, those are of those cigars, of course, the Roma Craft is, is the strongest in strength. But what I find that they all share is a really nice, um, smooth complexity of flavors, complexity in spice, subtlety in the, in the flavors and the spice. And I really tend to gravitate towards those rather than, than these type of cigars. And I would put these in cigars um, like the Arturo Fonte Rosado wrapper, the... Um, the Don Pepin Garcia, Blue Labels. Uh, a lot of those tend to be very pepper forward, black pepper. Um, I tend not to like gravitate towards the black pepper type cigars and towards more of a, a nuanced spice cigar. Not to say this is not is not a good cigar. It's been a great cigar. It's smoked really well. It has gone out twice, so that's been a little bit of a bother. And I don't think that I've been neglecting the smoking of it but it just kind of went out twice, and I'm not exactly sure why, but but it's well made, and it's held together. Like some cigars I've had, you know, you'll get to, to this part of the cigar, and for whatever reason, like, bits and pieces will start coming off the end. That's with just a few cigars. Not, and none, none of the major brands that I smoke have done that. But yeah, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. So, but like I was saying with the or earlier with the the lighting, so I've been working on the lighting, trying to figure it out. I hope it looks pretty good. I went for more of a, a cinematic approach, which is why we're using this kind of a Rembrandtish type of lighting. So I've got the the main light off to this side, illuminating most of the face, especially this half, and then there should be a little bit right here of a triangle. That's kind of the Rembrandt effect. So if you look at Rembrandt's paintings, they, his subjects tend to be heavily in shadow, which is a little bit on the cheek here and heavily on one side. And to achieve that, I've got a, the, the main key light is, is off to, the, to my left, to your right. And then I've got a halo light kind of hitting me right back here. And then I've, and just because I thought before when I was lighting it that it, it was a little bit too dark here, I do have a practical light in the distance that's just a small lamp, incandescent lamp, that's kind of just filling it in slightly. And then to the back, we've got a practical here, this um, Monte Cristo um, lit sign that I actually harvested from one of the cigar shops that I hung out in. They were getting rid of it many years ago, and they are like, hey, do you want this? I was like, yeah, I'll take that, put that somewhere in my, in my world. 
And then in the back, you can see a little bit of a blue haze in the corner. I've got a little light back there giving that blue light to, uh, to, uh, to just to give it a little more effect. So, Kels, did you get into the um, into the Aladino yet? I'd be interested to hear what you have to think about it. Yeah, now we're getting down to the nub. I mean, this is good enough to smoke to the nub. I mean, this, what are the, um, let's see what the, uh, the guys from Cigar Authority had to say about it. So, the second half sees the oak become more dominant with cracked peppercorn on the retrohale and aroma of the cigar. As the cigar burns down, I find it hard to put it down as a cookie dough sweetness with a touch of almonds makes an appearance in the last half inch of the cigar. So, about now... Cigar Authority says that I should be tasting cookie dough, well, I have a sweetness of cookie dough, with a little bit of almond. I don't think I get that. All right, so Cigar Authority also says for the finish, while the Perdomo Firecracker isn't the strongest release of the series to date, it is hands down the most flavorful of them all. When I cut the cigar, I always leave the fuse in place, and as I seen below, the fuse actually burns alongside the cigar, and is noticeable, noticeable on the aroma. Yeah, yeah, it, it has stayed. I mean, if you look closely, it has stayed. You can kind of see a little bit right here, yeah, that little tip. It has stayed together. Uh, firm white ash held all the way to the band. Yeah, the the ash held together until that point that I relit, and part of it fell off. It was holding together well. I mean, it hasn't. It hasn't fallen off at all. I mean, I've, I've actually intentionally knocked off as we've been going. I mean, I started. I decided that we should, I would do this uh, coffee and cigar night thing on Thursday because, actually, I made I, I made a video for the. I was working on a video for the channel. That was. Um, I wanted to do a video for the channel that was about cigars, and so it actually started with um, Roma Craft does this release every year of their Witchcraft cigar, and um, I got a box of it from uh, a place called Hogshead Cigar down in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So back in June. Last month, some buddies and I drove all the way down to Hogshead, to Fredericksburg, picked up our boxes, and I thought I would do a, a, an unboxing video and a smoking video of one of the cigars, and so I shot that, and it turned out to be like two hours long, and I sat down and started editing it together, and uh, it, it just seems so, it would seem if I made, if I did the full form of it, it would be really, really long, and I wasn't sure if it would be very interesting. And so I thought that maybe the best thing to do, because that was going to be that was the idea of that we would do a cigar, a video where we would smoke the cigar live, and so that people could smoke along with it and share their thoughts on it. But then I thought about it more, and I was like, well, that's this kind of idea is probably better for a live format like this and so I decided that maybe we'll do this and so I still have the footage from the witchcraft I'll 
I'm probably going to edit together. I was looking at, uh, Al actually mentioned to me the um, Cigar Obsession. So I watched a couple of his videos, and he takes his cigar ex smoking, and he condenses it down to 10 minutes. And I think that's probably, the, if, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a pre-recorded video, I think that's probably the better way to do it. Otherwise, you've got a lot of stuff just that's just happening, and he, I would imagine people would either fast forward through it or, or, or just just zone out completely. So we're going to start doing this more often. I'm going to try to do this once a week, Thursday night, 8 p.m. Um, so next week we're going to do the brule, the Dumbarton Trust Brule Toro. I got that cigar. And then the week after, two weeks from now, we're going to do the 30th anniversary cigar for Paul Gamerian. I also picked that up this past weekend. And we'll just go from there. So we're almost to the very end. It's going to start get to the point where it's just going to start to burn my thumb. The cigar's been very good. A lot of pepper. Some nice spice. I didn't quite get this, um, the idea of a cookie dough sweetness. I didn't get the apricots either. But it is a very good cigar. Pepper, if, if you're a peppery guy, this would be one that you want to seek out. Again, I got this one at Tobacco Leaf and Jessup. Rolls down there, and he's um, he's got the cigars, and I think he still has some more. I picked this up on Saturday, so he still had at least a box or two back then. So he's probably got a couple more left. So give them a call. And um, I got that link down in the, the show notes. Yeah, now it's starting to burn my fingers. All right, so I guess that'll be it for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you've got so, if you'd like to get some coffee, you can get um, the Esteli that I've been drinking earlier. Um, got that for ten percent off. You can use the 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 the, 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 the discount code Coffee Live. Again, the discount code is Coffee Live, and that'll give you ten percent off of your order. Also, if you want to subscribe to the coffee, you can set up subscriptions on our website and um, we'll send you coffee of your choice every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, once a month, whatever you'd like to have. Um, and if you join the subscription plan, 10% off of that as well. Um, so I think that's a great way to do it. I've got some uh, great coffee content coming up, especially some here and on the Spro channel. So if you're into coffee and you want to learn more about coffee, we've got a lot of that coming more with the troubleshooting espresso. I was shooting some of that today, um, the last couple of days, putting together some um, some video, some B-roll for that. Um, what else there? Yeah, so Spro Coffee is on is my other channel for uh, YouTube, and uh, you'll find some more great coffee content there. Uh, don't forget to turn on post notifications so you'll be notified every time a new video is released. And uh, we'll be releasing we release videos on the Spro channel every Monday and Wednesday. Mondays are usually reserved for the, the Spro vlog, which is a series of videos that we're doing for, um, for Spro that has different drinks and different concoctions that we're making <coughs> in the shop. Actually, next week, I believe, is Rusty's Wife, the Divas Cappuccino is coming up. No, that's August 10th. Actually, that'll be August 10th. Next week is uh, Strawberry Soda. Or this coming Monday, Strawberry Soda. Then the week after that will be the Divas Cappuccino featuring Amy Shoremont Obra, this, uh, who's Rusty's wife and uh, is a wonderful opera singer that, was, uh, that has sung at the, uh, the Metropolitan Opera as well as in Vienna and ha was in town last weekend for the, uh, a performance with Maryland Opera. And you'll get to hear her singing because on that soundtrack we actually <coughs> excuse me, put one of the performances of hers. So you'll get to hear her sing as well. And... Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, and then on this channel, I re usually upload new videos every Saturday. So this coming Saturday in two days is the new one that has um, the new the new ca camera that I have called the N M50 Canon. And um, yeah, so that's coming up. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week, next time. All right. So. Uh, Yeah, so 
catch you next week. And uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Have a great night. Thanks, Kel. Thanks, Russ, for watching and, uh, and, and joining on. Talk to you guys later. Have a good night.